Uh, hello and welcome to Chat K Podcast, where we break down and review a movie and, you know, give our personal opinions on said movie. I'm your host, Drinking Thomas Shoes. <laughs> and if you couldn't guess from uh, my co host screaming, then, uh, today we're discussing Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, but more specifically, Ultimate Edition. That ruined my throat. That really <laughs> Uh, it was released on Blu-ray in 2016. It serves the first time in live action that the two most beloved DC icons have battled it out, as well as being, you know, the half-hour longer version of the theatrical release, which came out the exact same year, March Pacific. The, the theatrical release was a uh, B-Tech version of Avengers Civil War, Captain America Civil War. So you know, it did come out like a month or so. Yeah, uh, well, it's still B-Tech. Yeah, like it was like literally like a couple of weeks before that one came out. Still B-Tech. Which is why I find it weird that they put a Doctor Strange trailer before that one. <laughs> because it's Marvel <Mama> DC. <laughs> to be fair though, it was the first day of uh, showing at the Light Cinema. They fucked up a lot of things that day. Like the fact they put an 18 trailer at the start of the movie and the movie's only 12 eh? I mean, we've all done that. <laughs> yep. Um, anyway, uh, the movie was once again directed by Zack Snyder, who we spoke about last week when we obviously covered Man of Steel. Uh, two more movies he directed are the movie Sucker Punch. Yeah, that weird movie he did back in 2011. Weird doesn't cover it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> The Legend of the Guardians, The Owl of Gahul, which he did the year prior. You know, that animated one. The Owls. Yes. Which wasn't actually that bad, and I've only just recently actually sat down and watched it about falling asleep. Let's just say I should not watch movies late at night. <laughs> Yeah, because... and again, I fell asleep watching Watchmen the first time I ever tried to watch that. But then again, my bad as well. Because that was over two hours long, and I watched that at like ten o'clock at night. So you found it hard as a man to watch Watchmen, though not watching them. Yes, but to be fair though, like oh, that one did get re released on four K. Uh, I think it was twenty. I want to say 19, it got re-released in 4K. Uh, so basically 10 years... No, mm, yeah. 10 years after it first came out, I actually sat through it from start to finish and actually it's become one of my, my, one of my favourite comic book movies out there. What, even better than Howard Duck? Oh, come on, don't get me started on Howard Duck. He, he can't compare them. No, it's he, like... You're going mad. <laughs> It's like comparing some of the shit like the, the, the Mario Bros films to amazing like the Ben 10 films. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's go straight into this then. So, some early thoughts, Hayden. Um, there are some bits that I really loved and the rest that I just forgot about because... <laughs> There are some parts of the film which are very, very forgettable. There's some parts which are very bad choices. <laughs> Facebook guy. Um, and there are some bits that are really fucking good. So, it's a mixed bag. Like, you get a bag and you shove James and Craig in it, but you also shove Alexa Bliss into it. It's like, got some really good stuff. Like, amazing, like, but you've also got them too. And it sort of like it drags the the bag down because the way quite a lot. <laughs> okay, that's a respectable opinion there. Um, I feel like when this first came out, I I enjoyed it to an extent. As I say, I watched this the first showing when the light opened back then, because that was the first literally it was the first movie they showed at the light cinema was that on its opening day and its opening time, <laughs> and uh, you know when it was like five quid a ticket those kind of days. And um, oh, I'm gonna say the good old days didn't work. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it to an extent. Obviously, you know, as we said, the Facebook zombie line geezer uh, that it kind of ruins it <laughs> a lot. Um, I think as I went on, obviously, the base edition is a bit naff at times because there is a lot of plot holes in it. But watching the ultimate edition, it does fill some of those not every plot hole obviously but it fills some of them you know to an extent so I couldn't tell the difference between both cuts I'd have to send you a list because I can't remember off the top of my head 
I couldn't see any single dis- like differences. Like, oh, there is half hour of extra footage, so. Uh, I mean, it's like I said, most of the film was forgettable anyway. So, Aiden, I watch. I was watching you fall asleep while watching it. I gave up on the movie to watch you precisely. fall asleep. <laughs> precisely, that's just how like forgettable it was. I was falling asleep. It's not because I like hadn't slept the entire day. No, no, it's because it was the film. Don't lie, it's because you hadn't slept the entire day and then you watched that film. I try and hang around with James, not fall asleep. To be fair though, I did make you watch the version that was half hour longer, so you went half hour longer than you sh- usually would. Yeah, it's your fault then. My bad. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't know, I, I think it's just because the fact that I've grown attached to a lot of Snyder movies, apart from, you know, Sucker Punch. Um, I've grown uh, attached to his way of filmmaking and whatnot, and I don't know, I kind of enjoy it a bit more than I probably should. Mm. It's kind of one of those, what's that word I'm after? Basically one of those movies that, obviously in a lot of people's eyes, quite bad, but to you, it's actually enjoyable enough to sit through, and, and it, to an extent... Like a guilty right, pleasure. That's the word I'm after, guilty pleasure. Yeah. It's kind of a guilty pleasure watch for me, or guilty watch, I think that's the word I'm actually... Yeah. It's kind of on those for me. I kind of do actually enjoy this movie. Obviously, there is a, a few things that would I'll, obviously hands down would like to change, and there's a few things that definitely should go out of it. <laughs> I've got the choice of Lex Luthor. <laughs> um, um, it's almost it's just as bad as fucking Wolverine CGI claws. But yeah, there's a lot to it. I do enjoy. I I like the whole like symbolic sort of angels and demons side to it. That constant symbolicness. I do enjoy yeah. that. Like the music choice, you can tell within that it's very angel and demon esque. There's some of the like the sort of ha oh, oh, ha, you know, you get on a drift. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 it's gu- it's guilty pleasure for me. I think a bit like over the dog. <laughs> but you can't That's compare the them. <laughs> That's on a different mm. level to this movie. That's like a hundred out of a hundred in Hayden's world. Yeah, it's, it's like a Dora it's level of happy. ratings. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Let's be honest, that, the year we watched Dora the Explorer, I think I was getting mental. <laughs> well, I think everyone was. <laughs> we all I think we, were, I think we yeah. still are. Uh, yeah. Which is probably why you're going to put me in a straight jacket with my rating for this movie. <laughs> I will, yeah. I'll put you in a straight jacket, and then we'll watch the Ben 10 films, yeah? <laughs> you can uh, keep my eyes open like Clockwork Orange. Yeah, I will. Oh, God, close them! Yeah. I won't use, like, toothpicks or anything. I'll get, like, some um, Star Wars clusters. I'll put my ear up, like, on, on top of the eyelid and the bottom of the eyelid. Keep it open. Can you not Keep it open. Are you using that much for a cheapskate? What about the Hello Kitty ones? They run out of them and being them, so I can get the power. damn it. <sighs> Don't blame me. You'll have to do. Anyway, you uh. Have the ones. Mmm. What did you say? Ooh, pretty I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going stop it. Oh. Anyway, uh, uh, we'll move on to the obviously opening sequence. So, uh, the opening sequence for this movie was obviously the this universe's version of the Wayne murder, as well as the funeral. So, it basically rolls it into one. And it sort of cuts it together, and I actually really enjoyed it because you know I love the music choice over the top of it. Yeah, I think it's I... very cinematic, artsy, artsy. I do very much find it funny the two actors, the actress and actor, actor they t- chose for Martha and Thomas Wade, <laughs> for the fact I said in The Walking Dead they're like bitter enemies, and then this they're like, oh come on love, let's go, let's take us to home after watching Zorro or Excalibur, I think it was in this universe. Nothing bad could happen. Yeah. Honestly, if they should be watching Macbeth. It would be fucking like ironic. <laughs> it would be very ironic watching Macbeth walk out. Ah oh, shit, we're gonna die. Yeah, I do find it very, as a cinematic point of view, it looks very nice to look at. Very, I want to say a bit different to how we usually get to see these sort of things. So obviously, all the other times we've seen these murders, obviously, yeah. Batman Begins was the, uh, was the Christian Bale ones we saw it in. Um, I'm pretty sure we saw it in near enough all fucking three of the uh, 90s ones. And I'm pretty sure they just did the exact same scene three times. Um, in Joker as well. We saw it in Joker. We saw it in Gotham the first episode. Yeah. Um, other than Joker, though, all those ones pretty much showed it in a normal context of 
just showing the scene, showing the murder and everything. Whereas, obviously, as we saw in Joke, it was more of like a mon- it, part of the montage, wasn't it, of the craziness. Mm-hmm. And obviously, this did it in the exact same sort of way. It did it in a it's montage, like sort of. Kind of like scene. Yeah, and obviously, it sort of showcases the first time Bruce obviously sees bats in a sense, for the fact that he, he gets, falls down that yeah. well, doesn't he? He goes inside a little cave and gets bitten by a bat and he gets radioactive powers from it and becomes Batman. But yeah, I, I like... I like <laughs> sure, why not? Um, I do like the bit as well when obviously he does fall in the cave and he starts raising him up, the bats do. And it, that's when he sort of sh- symbolises the sort of angel and demon side of it because it, it goes all the way yeah. to a bright light because obviously then that fades into the actual you know, present day intro, which is technically a past day intro for the fact that it's the exact same scene from the end of the first one, but from another perspective, which we'll get to actually when we talk about the action scenes, because it's very action-centred and very, like, full throttle in a sense. But for an opening sequence, I think they could have done worse. Yeah, I agree. I mean, let's be honest, like, we've seen, like, his parents die more times than we've seen Uncle Ben, and and that's a fucking a lot. So, it's... Okay, in the anime versions... Yeah, it wouldn't be. It wasn't really needed, but Lisa did it in a way it wasn't as samey samey. Yeah, like him just sitting there going, (sighs) "Dead parents, flashback time." Pretty much. (laughs) Like it was more of like put put into the opening sequence, like a bit like Deadpool two when there's the whole singing dance bit at the start. You know, it's more of like there as a nice show way of putting the credits and stuff instead of actually being like right this is my big point point like turn I t- put, moment I turned and all this serious bit more like you know what's happening there's only three of the context you know what's happening there's no point of putting more focus to it yeah cause if, if, but, you know, it's one thing everyone knows about Batman their even parents even their parents <laughs> literally yeah because if you, if you think about it um the obviously they said the Deadpool intro that was obviously showcasing what he's been up to since the first movie. Whereas this obviously is just remind going okay. So the first movie we had of this it fully focused on Superman, saw him and whatnot. Okay, so yeah, there's actually Batman in this universe. You, you uh, what didn't you know Batman was in this universe? Okay, we didn't mention it in the first film, but yeah, there's Batman in this universe. This is a uh, you know his origin slightly here, and then we're actually going to jump yeah. into the present day when he's you know big butch bat. I do like that as well, for the fact that these first two movies, they opened with the essentially how this character was born, in a way. So, obviously, the actual Superman one, he you know, actually did show him phys- born. physically born, whereas <laughs> this one is metaphorically yeah. being born as the Dark Knight. So, it's a nice way of sort of throwback to that sort of idea of the first movie, which it probably isn't, but you know, if you think of it that way, it is a nice throwback. It's like, it's like obviously, the whole point is, the whole point is filming, you're basically comparing Batman and Superman, there's differences, and what makes them the same. And obviously, the whole point is, both of them basically were born, physically and metaphorically, with their parents dying. So, see, Superman's born physically, and then sent off while the, their planet dies, and he, his father dies. And obviously, Bruce is metaphorically born into Batman when he physically sees his parents dying. There's another there's big difference with them, though. Is obviously Superman never saw his parents die because he was a baby and could probably not even remember them. No, he was blasted off, wasn't he? he was yeah, gone, he was, gone by, he was well. gone by that point. Like, uh, like even if he did physically see him, he wouldn't remember. Exactly. Whereas Bruce obviously did see him. And was more traumatized. And by the time like Superman watches like a human father die, he was sort of old enough now to like deal with it. it wouldn't be as traumatic. So that that's like, like the big like f- the initial difference. You know, have a, the same kind of situation happen, how it was dealt with, and the ages or affect how it's like impactful it is yeah nice little speech there that was was very intriguing um 
obviously before we actually move on to the casting characters, it wouldn't be right to talk about this sort of BVS style fight, whatnot, without referring to essentially what inspired it, which is obviously the Dark Knight Returns storyline, which I watched the animated movie earlier on, and it splits like two parts. The first part actually, it kind of does like what the first era of this movie does, which is focus on, well, obviously, ignore the Superman side of it, but focus on obviously Batman being Batman. Whereas the second era actually focuses eventually on Batman versus Superman. But so we get to see both sides, which, again, another thing that I probably wasn't as fully necessary. Like, there were some bits of the Superman which were unneeded or kind of boring. So maybe if we saw it purely from Batman's perspective, it probably would have been a bit more interesting. But the whole point is, like, it's still a. Superman movie as well though it's yeah. not just Batman it's both of them they've got to have both sides at least so yeah. if that was done better it probably would be more better but you know it's like it depends how you want to spin it like if you, it, it could have been cool if it was more of a Batman film instead of it being more of like both like we do, we do Superman maybe a Batman film and then this probably would have been a better choice but obviously, like, one of the main things is, like, let's be honest, they were trying to catch up to Avengers. Because, like... Well, they, were, was, they were how many years behind? Yeah, because they were quite rushed into it. It was, like, straight away for the team after one film. It's, like, a little bit rushed, but they had no choice, really. Like, they could have slowly built it up, but by the time they've got around to it, Endgame happened, and they're like, why the fuck are we going to compete with that? So it's like... Well, technically, Endgame came out two years after the failed team-up. Yeah. But, you know... I mean, I mean, like, by the time they got, like... They slowly built it up first. And then got around to it. They've already been beaten by, by Endgame. So... Probably... They didn't have the choice to slowly do it. They had to rush into it. So that's why it probably wouldn't... It probably isn't as polished as it should have been. Fair, from what I've been reading in terms of obviously what Snyder was planning, he already had like this entire sort of plan of how he was going for yeah. it. It was literally essentially five movie arc, starting with Man of Steel and ending with Justice League Part 3. And from what I've been reading earlier on, it, apparently all this, because a, a lot have been revealed from this like, storyboarding from the later parts of this like five movie arc. And apparently everything you've they've basically it's been leaked and whatnot. Ignore it because apparently it's just over the time it's been leaked and what it's just developed it differently and changed a lot of stuff. So basically, it's not as if they're spoilers anymore, that it's actually just old shit that probably still going to be there, but a lot of it is going to be changed. So he's literally just the, it's the hope of if this what's coming out at the end, later this month is successful, that they give a go ahead to finish yeah. actually off his story because apparently it ends in a cliffhanger from what I've read. The next the movie that comes out this month, so you know. <laughs> Go on I mean, those cliffhangers. <laughs> I mean, it's probably a bit like, um, a bit like Marvel. I don't get mentioned in Marvel, but obviously the whole point is, with Avengers, like Josh Whedon, like never actually. <clears throat> okay, redacted Whedon. Thank you. <laughs> never actually um, made like had any idea any plans for the MCU. Like he literally just was like, okay, I'll just put this in, do this, and then they were like. Like, make sure you add, add that scene in and that scene in. It was like, our, our part of it is like, he didn't really have any plans or anything because it's more, everyone else was just pushing him into what they want. So, you know, it works, but you can see some things which didn't quite, like, connect. Look, obviously, some of the um, end credit scenes were completely different to, like, they don't really make sense to the whole overall plot unless you, we go around like, oh, we that scene when we saw Fernando saying, if I do it myself, was done just after he like went to Nivellier. If you put that in your own head cannon instead of like when it was made to look like it was straight away after Ultra and him planning it. There were some plans that obviously were made which never really ended up that way and was changed. So you can see how over the time things do definitely do shift and become more 
to what the they think would be a better story for the audience and what would fit the whole plot overall than to their initial idea. Well, if you think about it, though, that, that obviously that franchise, that's obviously headed yeah. by someone who's really above all of them. And basically, yeah. it's just full of different directors giving their visions as long as it fits into his vision. Yeah. Whereas this universe, it's a lot of it early on was practically just Snyder. He was the one who built this universe up. Though they obviously brought in obviously other directors eventually, like the fact they brought in uh, David Ayer uh, for Suicide Squad, Ooh. Patty Jenkins for the Wonder Woman movies, James Wan for the Aquaman. Um, I can't remember the guy who did Shazam, but that guy. Um, Tom's trying to think now. His mind's going blank here of other directors. Um, the one who, uh, the one who did uh, Birds of Prey. You get my gist. I'm going with here. Yeah, I get what you mean. Obviously, eventually they sort of dwindle that into these different directors giving them their visions. But originally, obviously, it's Snyder behind everything. Yeah. And obviously, there is people above him. They're still not stopping him a lot of times from getting his vision out. Though eventually they did when they you know fucked him yeah. up and everything. But eventually they brought well, him back like, in because yeah. they're like, like okay, failed, vision. get in. Yeah. I think when his vision didn't match to what they wanted, they were like, get rid of him. I think I do think like the executives behind like Warner Brothers and stuff were there like we got to copy Marvel because they're making so much money. Other pe- people are gonna want to cash into that, like you for example. <laughs> Look, you told me to write that franchise. You're telling me to do it. I'm joking. I'm joking. But, yeah, see? I want money. And they have money. Let's do what they do. Yeah, but that's, I want to go darker at times. I yeah. Go... Oh. That's what I mean. You like Snyder. That's, uh, that's, that's what I think. No, I with DC, they should just stick to the darkness because... Because yeah. DC is very dark at times. And, no, obviously... Mm-hmm. That's, why, that's why I think one of the main reasons... Obviously, there's many, 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 many reasons why the, the Justice League yeah. failed, or Justice League, as people keep calling it. Um, they tro- they took this basically dark tone that was in these like early how many movies, and basically yeah. just went, oh no, let's actually just make a straight up Avengers movie here. Literally, just take Perfect. a lot of stuff from Avengers, like the scene from this uh, Age of Ultron where uh, uh, Black Widow and Hulk fall over the table and on top of each other. They literally did the exact same scene in fucking uh, Justice League with Wonder Woman and Flash. They yeah. basically took a lot of stuff people knew and loved from those movies and went, okay, let's just put it in this. No one will notice. Everyone noticed. Box office disaster. But that's what I mean. They changed the tone drastically. You can't do like any movies just before, just like it was these two. We were doing so far Suicide Squad and Wonder Woman, wasn't it? So it's four movies that are dark. Even though obviously Suicide Squad got a lot of cuts from it, it still had that dark overtone. It still looked like it could have easily been directed by Zack Snyder. Just obviously a more yeah. f- funner undertone. Black Snyder with more neon glowing. And yeah. But then obviously, uh, as I say, they ch- and changed everything from those darkness into this really light movie. And though obviously we've seen the facts of Shazam and Aquaman, they've gone back to, they've stuck with that sort of lightness. And even Birds of Prey, they've stuck with a bit light, that lightness. But there's still been enough darkness within them to make it still fit within this chronological sort of timeline. If you get my drift. Yeah. It would be like if Iron Man and Captain America and Thor, those films were like really, really fucking dark. Well, if you think about it, the first four was, was quite dark at times. They were dark, but like there was obviously a lot, there was again, a bit more of a the, themes the, to it. Then well. again, the first, like, the first movies of each of them were quite dark at times. Oh, even I all I, I, them. Yeah, the Paramount like, side of it, apart from yeah. the Avengers, were quite dark. But then obviously they well, sort of drifted away. But then again, you still get the occasional dark one, like uh, I think there was, Winter Soldier, for example. That's an I think example. all Marvel films have the elements of darkness to them. But they, they choose more, more than others. They choose more obviously like, fun at times. Yeah, like Ant Man's obviously one of the more comedy funny ones. So it's for Ragnarok, one of the fucking funny ones. Yeah, all these ones are a lot more upbeat, but there are still dark undertones to them, like God of the Galaxy. Fucking like. You see it at the first like start of it. You see his mum dying of cancer straight away, and then it goes up to like all these comical sides. But there's still some proper dark moments to them. But like, the whole what makes makes Marvel their comedy work is they don't take themselves too seriously. They know when to like not be too serious and when to stop. Whereas I think because the DC was like. A lot into more dark and serious, and then they were like, if, if they add like 
some sort of moments of comedy to it, but still keep that theme, it would have worked. But because they were like, well, Marvel funny, let's do that. And sort of the, the tone shift too much that it became unsettling in a way. Like, what the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, there should have been like a small... If they're going to yeah. go light, they should be more subtle about it. But I, st- yeah. I, I still think they should have stuck the dark tone. They started with dark. What's the point? They made yeah. us carry on this dark overtone. Whereas like, they say Marvel's got this more fun yeah. overtone and lighter overtone, but they say it's got this subtle dark overtone. Like, yeah. It's this little tiny bit here, whereas obviously DC is more dark. Okay, there's a little, little, little bit of subtle uh, lightness yeah. in there, like as you say with Suicide Squad, but it was more dark, but then they've sort of drifted that the other way around there, yeah. which as you say is just straight up copying what Marvel have, have done for the past fucking decade. But I still think they should have stopped the dark because when it's dark, I like it when it's dark, which is why yeah. I'm very interested if, obviously, the New Justice League is successful, if they uh, give Aya's Aya cut, basically, of Suicide Squad the chance. Because I do want to see the dark version that we got from the first trailer. Yeah. That would be interesting to see from what I've been reading was cut from that movie. Mm. Um, like, how I think they should have done it is, like, they should, all the characters that were dark keep that dark theme, that dark tone, and only just have Flash be the comical character. Or Aquaman, because that's clearly worked for that as well. Right, it worked, yeah. But have them two be kind of like the comical ones. Like, the, like, Hawkeye and, like, characters, and, like, you know what I mean? Basically, have, basically have all the, being, yeah. the, the... Basically, the ones that can either be used in light and dark, or, yeah. or, but they're more humorous at times, or ones you don't take seriously at all, like I say, Aquaman back in the day. Yeah. Have them as the light tone yeah. of the movies and their movies in general be a bit lighter but like for stuff like batman and obviously they yeah, start with superman just keep them as the dark ones even wonder woman yeah. keep that as dark keep them like yeah I, I get i get what you're saying that way you'd be more in character and if you wanted to slowly have them become become more light less serious and more lighter then you can do that because that could be character development but if they go straight away into like he's mourning over the lost of superman let's make him crack jokes yeah I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And we've drastically gone off t- uh, topic from the original yeah, talk. Yeah. I was, I was, I brought up Dark Knight Returns, and then we just went off completely into this Marvel versus DC discussion. It's but, more of like how, yeah, that that big problems of like the next film of what the original cut at least. It is obviously the tone, and yeah. there's no none of that here because the tone is quite still. Dark, dark yeah it's very 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 broody like batman mm-hmm. so which works for dc yeah if, before we move on i actually will carry on the dark knight returns thing i was on, i'm gonna say about so i said the first film with that which i watched it as like one big movie uh but i the first part of it i say is focused on batman coming out of retirement it's not it's very old and it's humorous to see him trying to actually climb a rope but really old um and eventually he sort of comes out more into the light and everyone sees it. And that, obviously, no, this obviously is Lex Luthor just being a, a basically a maniacal maniac going, okay, go kill Batman, or Batman kills you. Either way, I'm happy. Yeah. Whereas in that, it's actually the US president, because he sees what, even though Batman at this time is doing good, because he's basically bringing Go- Gotham together and everything, uh, he's like, oh, go deal with our problem, please. And Superman basically goes off to deal with Batman. And that's when they bring in the armored suit for, that he has at the end of this. Yeah. And they're basically brawl. But the difference is with that, okay, eventually he uses a bit of kryptonite to help him fight. But it's a nuke, isn't it? A nuke weakens Superman enough beforehand, yeah. uh, before the fight even happens. So he's weak enough for Batman just to beat the crap out of him at times. But then, as I said, then they bring in the kryptonite gas and that, and obviously it weakens him enough. But... Yeah. One thing I noticed, uh, obviously down the bit in the fight later on where they use these so- uh, sort of sonic, sort of sonar devices to basically hold Superman. It obviously just breaks the fucking the uh, Teenage Mutant Turtles uh, home <laughs> and just throws it at uh, um, to break. Basically, that's sort of the sonar thing that's in Batman's arms in this version. He uses that in his arms. And obviously, instead of the turrets, he has basically like a fucking army of missile launchers in fucking buildings yeah. that lock onto his heat. Basically, basically, seeing uh, Batman, he just locks onto him and blows the crap out of him. But I mean, that version, instead of obviously the Martha sort of ending get there, yeah, Batman actually has a heart attack. That's, oh. how, that's how he stops. Because Superman, because he doesn't want to fight him. Batman's the, 
the one who's sort of orchestrating the fight in here, not Superman. A bit like in the film. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you know, Superman pretty much goes strange and just punches the shit out of Batman instantly. Yeah, this is Superman's more... like, I don't want to fight. Batman starts shooting him. Like, fuck you. Ba- yeah, basically, <laughs> yeah. instead of that, Batman's one who straight up punches Superman first, and then obviously then the fight begins and whatnot. But I mean, eventually, Superman looks into his chest and sees his heart basically just going really fast. And he's like, your heart? And he's like, screw you, man. Oh, shit, I'm having a heart attack. And then basically, that's, how, that's literally how the fight ends, is he has a heart attack. But he's not dead. Spoiler alert. He's got like a whole underground like army of people working in the dark and Superman just lets him do it. Basically that's the run of the mill. It's basically that's what it sort of inspired this, but obviously they changed a fuck lot. Because Green Arrow is actually in that version, not this. And he has one arm in that well. version. Mm. Obviously as well. They can't really do an old man like yeah. Batman. they made him older and like he's a more vet he's still a veteran Batman, but he's not like old Tired. man. Batman, because let's be honest, it'd be like actually getting the Hank Pym in the Marvel film, be Ant Man, and going around doing the Ant Man suits while also being old as hell and possibly a bad back and yeah, you have a heart attack straight away while yeah, shrinking. I get what you're saying. It'd be a bit weird, stupid to do. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's mm. a sort of some of the mill of what the Dark Knight Returns is. Good film, I will uh, say. Mm. I thought the fucking version I brought was instead of like it's like five and a half hours. I was like what? And it's like I oh know it's not. It's actually only two and a half the movies like all together. It's just like it's like fucking two and a half hours of fucking bonus things. I was like oh, okay. oh. it's because it's basically on Amazon Prime. It's literally they sell essentially the DVD version, but for the Prime Video. So it's basically all the bonus things you get on the Blu-ray and DVD and whatnot is rolled into the actual thing. It's like oh stay tuned after the movie to you know check out the bonus stuff. So as the movie ends, turn off. <laughs> but it's yeah. basically like yeah um, like that, the good old days when you can go through the films and flick through loads of different shit like I remember the Thunderbird films you can flick between like each individual like vehicle like Thunderbird vehicle and each one had their own little different things like oh Thunderbird freeze the clips and go into the Thunderbird like 2 oh you watch the actual film and Thunderbird 5 you can like see all the bonus features and shit I remember like watching the behind scenes and how they like did the fighting and stuff. Essentially, yeah, like that. But obviously, it's just rolled into one digital, yeah, movie. Essentially, you yeah. can't really have the option to flip between each one. Yeah, it's basically that. So yeah, I recommend watching it. If people haven't watched that. It's it's really solid. And Joker does what mm. we thought he was going to do in the Joker movie, which is murder an entire fucking uh, TV uh, audience. <laughs> but instead, it was just one guy. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, this changed it. You fucking deserve. And you get to see Batman murder Joker, which is cool. But technically, Joker kills himself at the same time. It's weird. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll move on. Uh, we talked way too long about <laughs> stuff there. Uh, so we'll move on to obviously the cast and characters. So I'll start off with obviously the Superman side of it. The returning cast. There's a lot of returning characters from the first one, but I'm going to. Yes, there is. It's basically like, name four. the name. Well, no, there's, there's a Martian. Yeah, Martian Manhunter's back. Yeah. And they. His assistant, she's back. Obviously, yeah, like him, Perry. uh Perry's back. Mm. Uh, there's basically a load of characters that are back, and a load of new characters. So I'll get through it. So first off, we have Clark Kent, Kal-El Superman back again. Once again, Henry Cavill, who was in the Mission Impossible movie mm. Fallout, which is a really good movie. I recommend watching that one. It's one of the best Mission Impossible. Well, sorry, is the best Mission Impossible because of Henry Cavill. Do you know the one when he does that uh, yeah. the, the uh, punch in the bathroom and he sort of co- cocks his fist like the guns, which then no spoil it. Yeah, it, it literally that that scene when he, he's basically like, he sort of punches forwards basically just to like warm himself up. That inspired fucking a scene in the Krypton series where obviously Superman's ancestor does the exact same thing in a fight. He sort of does the exact same thing as for Mission Impossible. Basically, a lot of that series just uh, replicated stuff from Superman's movie history. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, obviously at times, obviously Hem- Henry Cavill again does a good job, like he did in Man of Steel. But compared to Man of Steel, I don't think he's on par as he was in that film. Yeah, it's like what I think he did good enough for what he had. Yeah, but I think if the writing was a little bit better and it was done a bit better, he would have seemed a lot more like Superman. It's not. I don't think it's his acting. I think it's. It's how the right character this time. Yeah. So they, 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 they drastically changed how he was 
from Man of Steel. Because if you look at Man of Steel, at the end of it, he's like, oh, don't find me. It obviously blows up that fucking uh, the satellite drone thing. Yeah. He's like, oh, don't find me. He's sort of like this, essentially a sort of godly figure that everyone loves. And then this one's straight away like, oh, yeah, there's, there's people that love him, but there's a lot of people that really fucking hate him there. So, yeah, these people. Superman, do you want to go to court? Here you go. Here's a courtroom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the way, oh, we've got Ben Affleck. He was in Daredevil. Let's do a court scene with Superman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, let's get the one who, let's get the character who, like, played a lawyer and not have him used in any law, law stuff at all. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but, yeah, so he's kind of like a mixed bag in this film compared to the first one. Because, obviously, we both praised him massively for the first one. He was really good at bringing Superman to life on the big screen Ooh. for the f- what it was like seven years after the last time it ha- uh, we saw someone, which obviously was Brandon Roof from yeah. uh, Legend of Tomorrow. But this version is kind of a, a bit of a letdown to where he was in that. I'm hoping the Justice League one, when he is in that, he does a lot better than what we got in you know the original version of that as well. <laughs> so hopefully, fingers crossed. Then again, he's, there's no mustache. But then again, the irony of me choosing Miss Impossible Four Letters, his movie this time, is the fact that's the reason he had the mustache in the first place. Because he had a moustache for that movie. And they went, yeah, you're under contract. Your moustache is under contract. You can't shave it off. <laughs> literally, his moustache was, his his was under contract. He could not shave. And they had no way of like hiding it instead of using shit CGI. Well, I'll, I'll watch someone like, uh, redo that CGI like, on a cheaper budget. And they did it so much better. There's literally a video like, somewhere. I can't remember where I saw it on YouTube. But it's somewhere that someone literally does the exact same digital effects. But does it so much better. You can't tell it's there. Compared to, do you bleed? <laughs> oh, bad. Ugh. But yeah, Mission Possible is the reason he had the moustache. Imagine having a moustache never under contract, you can't shave. <laughs> it's got a life oh. of its own, though. It's like That's fucking P- it's like Peter when he grows that chip on his shoulder. It's got a life of its own. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Uh, and move on to our next, obviously, returning character, which is obviously Lois Lane, once again, played by Amy Adams, who was in the movie Enchanted. And, again, similar to uh, Henry Cavill's uh, Clark Kent Superman in this, she's a bit of a letdown compared to the first one. I feel like one of the things with both of them is the fact that, as you say, a lot of times when they're, obviously, it's their characters are, because it's not as good as when you see Batman come to life on the big screen again. And yeah. I feel like he overshadows a lot of what they do, which is obviously what makes them a bit more. Meh, there was a. Meh, it's, you and then know. they both get. They both get. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, as I said, I praised her in the first film again, because I thought she was really good in the first film. But then again, I feel like she had more screen time in the first film because she was more thoroughly into the plot. Whereas this one, she, she is and she isn't at the same time. Though she does a lot of obviously stuff to like, say, oh yeah, uh, this bullet, yada yada, we know what this is. I've got uh, basically the bad guy here. Uh, yep, Lex Luthor, yada yada. Let's do this. She basically, she basically is there to pretty much say, like, to fix the little, like, hold the plot, but like, oh, uh, the reason why, like, they were all being, like, arrested and stuff is because it was Luthor who caused the initial shootout at the start. Yes, see, plot. She, as, yeah, as, 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 I don't know. I just feel like she's a bit of a letdown compared to the first one. Yeah. It's more of like she was just used as a way of blowing plot, it. Plot filler. Yeah, she's there for information and there to like get Superman to places and that's pretty much it. Whereas in the first one, obviously, she was hunting Superman, wasn't she? Trying to track she's, him she's down. She's more... She's actually doing yeah. proper journalism. Yeah. Whereas this, she's more just doing like sort of CIA type work. Like the reason why at the start she's there is because she's doing all the reporter stuff, but everyone else is using her. She's pretty, yeah. she's pretty much just become the damsel in distress, which is a shame. Yeah, you know, it's a bit lame. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> okay, so next up we have Martha Kent again. Played by Dan Lane, who was in the movie Unfaithful. And again, she then again she didn't have much screen time in the first one, but again, I feel like she had a bit more screen time in that. And of course, in this yeah. version, she she's there for the pivotal moment, if you know what I mean. Yeah, she's basically there to... Stop the fight. Yeah. 
and be a damsel like, in distress at the same time. Yes. But also, it was just a moment of, like, trying to encourage, like, to mean, like, you don't know, own them anything. And that's literally about it. Get it from her. Yeah, she's not really as useful in this movie. She wasn't the first. Yeah. Again, Again. I, 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 we've said this for the last two. Uh, not as good as the first one, then. I see anyone to do the Superman family isn't as good as the first one. Yeah, that's agreed. And obviously, though he's barely in it, I will mention obviously we have Jonathan Kent once again for that flashback sequence. Again, yeah. Kevin Costner yeah. played him, and it was in the movie Waterworld. And again, he's just there just to speak to Superman for one sequence. You can't. I, I, we're not really going to say much about him because you can't really say too much about him because he only has a couple of lines and that's it. Gone. But as usual, Kevin Costner, he does a good job of his lines. He's just obviously yeah, just there to go, hey, Superman, go on, bye. <laughs> and tell a story. That's literally what he's there for. Just to remind Superman that everyone makes mistakes. Because obviously he tells that story about flooding the fo- uh, saving his farm from being flooded when he was younger. But in the process, he flooded the neighbor's farm, which killed all their animals. So he's literally just there to tell him even humans make mistakes. So gods, basically alien gods, whatever you want to call yourself, you're bound to make a mistake in your life. So just accept it and move on. Basically, that's what his character is for this movie. And of course, we get uh, get Zod as well back. I think his performance in this is a lot more better than the other one. You see a lot more like active and a lot more, less like Deadwood in this uh, film than the previous one. So who are you talking about again? I I got sidetracked in my mind. Zod. Oh, Zod. <laughs> you mean he's you mean he's dead corpse? I think his I think his performance in this film was a lot better. Than previous. <laughs> yeah, like it, obviously I felt the character. It felt like he was there. Then the, the other film, it just felt more like I'm a generic villain. But this one is beautiful. For fuck's sake. <laughs> we'll move on to the next batch of characters, which is the Batman side of it. To kick it off, obviously, we'll kick off with Bruce Wayne, Batman. Yeah. Played by, this time by Ben Affleck, taking the role from Christian yeah. Bale. And he was... Well, we couldn't mention him without mentioning the film Daredevil he was in. For the fact we've already mentioned it once, certainly. <laughs> and the fact that Hayden spent most of the movie uh, watching it going, Oh, he's blind. <laughs> he's blind, though. We can't see. <laughs> but yeah, we, we can, I think we're both going to agree that Ben Affleck was... Uh, probably before he was announced, we wouldn't both would have probably said like, "Hmm, I don't know." It's better. It, really? play, I, I can't it, see it. Exactly. That, that, <laughs> okay, she's gonna make a pun there. Of course she did. Um, I feel like obviously we both would have said something like that. But after watching it, we both very much agreed that Ben Affleck was a perfect choice to play Batman. It He's brings this good. other side to it. Obviously, this more mature, older side. Because obviously, every other version we've seen is usually like this young playboy or. To an extent, like maybe in the thirties to forties, yeah. but this is mostly you know, a much older sort of not too old that it's like Dark Knight Returns where he can't climb a rope properly, but old enough that he's been doing this work for twenty odd years. I think it's twenty years. Uh, yeah. Alfred points out at one point, or more than twenty years. I can't remember. He did say twenty. I don't know if he meant more or just exactly, but basically, this is the first time I've actually seen Batman who's been doing this job for a very fucking long time, and I really enjoyed Ben Affleck's performance as Batman. It's like, it's like um, in the previous films, the uh, the Batman, it, like the back yeah, Batman felt more like series one Arrow, you know, yeah. still making mistakes, very young, still quite playboy, but has a has that own that element of darkness to it. Whereas obviously, then it becomes like this one's more like the last series of, of Arrow with him in it, like a lot more age withered down suffered so much loss that another bit of loss just throws him over the edge which obviously kind of technically happens here it's more like this Batman has been obviously lost a lot of people because I mean they're basically like the whole point is Robin's already fucking dead in this yep. so you know it's like he's lost his partners lost his family He's just been pushed down, grinded down. That you can definitely feel that, and it, I mean, it even makes like what he does like understandable because he suffers so much loss, and he feels like he's probably losing control of his life or anything like that. 
most people would do when they've had they've had so many deaths that probably wants to pin all that frustration on somebody and uses Superman because of what he, he's reckless fighting. So, yeah, I, I he did a really good job there. Yeah, I, I 100 percent agree there because. Obviously, Ooh. coming off Christian Bale, it's a fucking tough task. So obviously, Henry Cavill coming off fucking like all the other actors who played him, none of them have really lived up to Christopher Reeves back in the old yeah. days. So it's not as if it's like too much of a task for him to come in and go, "I'm Superman." Whereas Batman, he's literally got to come off the back of Christian Bale, who had the exact same sort of task as Henry Cavill, with the fact that he's coming off the back of fucking Val Kilmer and fucking George Clooney, who yeah. were nowhere near at Michael Keaton. So it's not. It was a tough task, and I feel like he did really well. Because I know, obviously, there's still some people who are not a fan of Ben Affleck's Batman, but I'm a big fan. Connor's one who's not, for example. Yeah. Uh, he does not like Ben Affleck as Batman. But I disagree. I think Ben Affleck's called cool Batman, and it's a bit dark in my background, but yeah. obviously, as seen, I'm a very big Batman, uh, Ben Affleck Batman guy, because I've got a fucking statue from the movie, and he's Batarang. I so, mean, let's be honest. Like, his task was pretty much the same task that Joe Leto had, coming off the back of, like... The Dark, Dark Knight, like Jericho, yeah, he, Fletcher. Jesus Christ, he's like, yeah, he, literally that task was almost impossible, and he failed miserably. And obviously, that could be different in the extended, the actual proper fucking original cut. Who knows? When, we'll when, see, when we'll, yeah, we'll see. It's it's not it's not like it's Joe Litto. It's not like going to be that like groundbreaking. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's it's not going to be anywhere near the two we've got. It's like, yeah, it's, but it's, it's like, it's like completely... a sibling that you you, you know yeah. you don't like, but you, you have to like for him being there. I mean, fucking Facebook guy did better job of being like a Joker like character than Joe Litto did, and he wasn't even playing Joker. <laughs> yeah, he, he, I mean, his performance was a joke, but still. Yep. Yes, it was. But yeah. <laughs> I, I, thumbs up, Ben Affleck. Good job. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move on to our next uh, Batman character, which is obviously Alfred. Another sort of similar situation here because we had the great Michael Caine. Uh, Jeremy Irons is the one who plays him this time, who we last saw when we did the Assassin's Creed podcast last year. And no. I fucking it, it spent, I spent ages trying to figure out what I didn't say he was in. So I don't think I said this. Uh, the Borgias or whatever it is, that fucking religious TV show he was. Like, yeah, he was in that. Uh, and he again, was a kill Mufasa, so. who said that one last year? Who's fine? That's why I couldn't use it. He killed Mufasa. I can't stress it enough. <laughs> Alfred killed Mufasa. But yeah, this like fucking Ben Affleck and Christian Bale. Iron's got like a fucking Mark Kane. Because Mark Kane had three yeah. movies to prove why he was a great Alfred, and he fucking knocked it out of the park. But again, similar to Ben Affleck's Batman, I think Jeremy Irons came in and gave us a really good uh, Alfred. I feel like he gave us yeah. a different kind of Alfred. A bit, obviously, a bit. Not young, young, but a younger esque because he's still fucking old. But he gave us this more, I want to say, funner side at times because he's a bit of a joker at times. No pun intended because we keep mentioning a more Joker. Sarcastic kind yeah. Of. And obviously, he's the one trying to be the one that's drawing Batman back to Earth. Like, oh, Superman's yeah. not our enemy. Don't fucking start a war that we don't need. But alas, he doesn't listen. Vengeance in mind, you know Batman stuff, but uh, He's Batman. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel no, like Jamie Irons. Was a good real dad. <laughs> I feel like Jamie Irons was a good choice for Alfred. Definitely, I agree. Like he is just amazing. Like you can play a good villain, you can play a good butler. That's all you need to say about him, really. So but, the, only, the only good thing about Justice League was that Jamie Irons back. Yeah, I mean, like, he actually did good in that movie. <laughs> I mean, like the whole. Like you mentioned, like it was a tough thing for him to deal with, but because of who he, like he, how, how good he is, it, we all knew it probably wouldn't have been that hard. It's like if you were to get like Morgan Freeman, it's not like, like it's so like hard to like replace any of Morgan Freeman's characters because it's how unique he is. Whereas I think because of how good Jeremy Irons is and. How good Michael Caine is! Like they're like Balancing two effects. titans. The two titans, basically. It's like you can't Teen Titans, they, different movie. Yeah, Teen Titans. <laughs> they, they can't beat each other, but they can still like stand each other's place. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I get what you're saying. None outshines the boat. No, none, but both of them don't outshine, outshine each other, but they more like complement each other in a way. Like they both they both do different sides to the Alfred, but they're both still good sides. Yeah. I I, yeah. I I think I should both show two different sides to Alfred. Obviously, Mark Kane had the more sympathetic at times. So the fact that yeah. uh, the one scene, literally, when Bruce is dead, he starts crying. Sympathetic. Whereas, yeah. obviously, as you say, Irons shows the more sarcastic. Uh, yeah, do you really have to actually do that? I know I'm supporting you and whatnot, but yeah. I think this, you know, this isn't the right path you should choose. Choose this path instead. Mm. Uh, they both, they're both, they're both definitely feel like father figures. Yeah. But who aren't trying to overstep their but burns, yeah. Kind of the need to. Yeah. You know. I agree. Okay. So obviously we have to, uh, we obviously won't talk too much about these next two for the fact that they don't have any lines apart from one line for one of them. Uh, obviously, okay. we, it wouldn't be right talking about Superman's family without mentioning Batman's family being present. So obviously we have both Martha and Thomas Wayne in this. Martha's played by Lauren Cohen, who is in The Walking Dead. And Thomas Wayne's played by Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who was in Watchmen. The Walking Dead. And <laughs> also in The Walking Dead. So obviously we can't talk much about them because literally they're in there just for the opening where there's no words. Obviously Jeffrey Dean Morgan's the only one he says one thing and all he says is Martha just to remind Batman at the end. Oh yeah, your mum was called Martha. You need to stop fighting. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much just for the audience really, let's be honest. Yeah. Because yeah, like, but... even though I forget that he's called Tom, but because they said Martha, it's like you go, so her name is Martha, but Superman's name is Father, I thought Martha. I really hope they don't fucking use that. Because <laughs> we'll move on because you know we don't get you can't really talk too much about them, so we'll move on to our god damn it villain. Um, obviously, we have Alex Luthor as the main yeah. bad guy of this movie, he's played by Jesse Eisenberg, who was in Zombieland. But it's uh, Hayden keep saying the social network because he was in that, fucking... yeah. <sighs> Lex Luthor, yeah, yeah, the, the bald, very intimidating, serious guy, the very opposing character, okay. We'll get Mark Zuckerberg with a wig on. Can we can we just speed through him? Can we just say one word just sum him up? Shit. Just, that's the word I was going to say. Yeah, shit. Can we move on, please? I, I just don't want to talk about him. It, it's so awful. I tried to defend him at one point, and then my mind's just like, why would no. you even try to defend him? No. It's so bad. No. There's so many yeah. better Lex Luthers out there. Controversial to say, Kevin Spacey was a better Lex Luthor. James, are you here? <laughs> James? <laughs> Spacey only ever turns even, up when uh, even James the, is there. Even the fucking <laughs> lower budget TV versions are better. The fucking Michael Rosenborn from Smallville and I can't remember his name. Uh, you know, the one from fucking Supergirl, the one who's in Two and a Half Men. Uh, he's good as well. Yeah. So how the hell does a lower budget get it better than the big budget? And that doesn't surprise me. It's not the first time big budgets have flopped. They want to use his face, I think. Because yeah. like, obviously he was doing pretty good around there at the time as well, I think. Well, it'd, like, it'd been about six years since the social network. No, it, not not that side, but I think he was doing a bit more stuff. I remember, he was doing I, more, remember I remember he was quite big then. Oh, so, so big, big. He was doing a lot more. Like, he was doing a lot of films, but not like major, major films. Not so. film wise, I mean, like, like publicly, like, oh. wise, a lot of people were like enjoying him physically. <laughs> get my drift. I get your drift. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, uh, okay, maybe. Uh, yeah. I'll move on. Just with the word shit then. Um, so lastly, just because it, we got, we're fucking almost an hour into this and I'm considering maybe even, I may be, I may be even considering cutting it uh, in half into two parts. Who knows? Um, oh, well. <laughs> uh, I was the last character I'm going to mention is the new hero to the movie, which is Diana Prince, Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, whose first movie role was Fast and Furious back in 2009. And she fucking overshadows everyone. Yeah. <laughs> she, when she, she that was literally the one scene she just comes in, just blasts, blocks everything with fucking uh, a, a bracelets, and it's like, oh yeah, I'm here. And we're like, okay, time to simp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel like she gives us this different kind of Wonder Woman that we're used to sort of seeing. Because as you said, as I said when watching it, a lot of the old incarnations of Wonder Woman, but a lot more butcher women. Because Amazons. Um. But this obviously version is a lot more less butch. And more realistic, really. Yeah. She fits more into this sort of universe. And she, mm. as you say, when she comes in, she just overshadows everything. It's like, yep, she's cool. We've got badass music. Badass. She fights yeah. like hell. There you go. Great. I, I mean, wait for the Wonder Woman movie. Matt, I mean, 
Batman for the entire film just simping over her, really. Season of yeah. Pie, I'm going to fucking follow her. <laughs> oh, there she is. There she is. Oh, she's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the fuck she is, but I'm like looking at a picture on the internet of her. <laughs> but yeah, she, she's good. She's very good in this. Definitely. Very good. Perfect choice. I'm glad she uh, dropped yeah. out the role of uh, the bad guy in the first movie to do this. Perfect choice. <laughs> I think, uh, like, she won the good, like, one of the good things of, like, the whole rushing into it is that her entrance was really fucking good. <laughs> Yeah, agreed. Like, the other thing I would, like, remove, in a way, is that picture, that, that old-time picture was taken, not actually have the armour on, or, or have, the, have the armour closed more, more off, so it's more of a surprise who she is. Like, there's like, oh, she's... That, she just hasn't aged, she's well, there. That, 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 plays into, that plays into, uh, obviously, the actual Wonder Woman movie, because that literally is a scene from yeah, the movie. Yeah, you know from the they, film. They literally take the picture in the movie to set this up. Yes, I know. But, I mean, like, audience-wise... I get what you're saying, but I'm pretty certain from the fact that yeah. a lot of it would have been revealed by this point anyway, not in the movie, just like True. in marked in that, that you knew Wonder Woman was in it. Yeah, you yeah, knew who was playing right. Wonder Woman. It was, you know, not really a fucking big surprise, but I, I, get, what I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, hey, if they don't work, if they done it like if they don't put, put more thought into that bit and like thinking, okay, marketing wise, we won't say who she's playing and be a massive reveal. That would have been good, but even though we didn't have it, the the reveal we had at least was still fucking amazing. And as we'll say near the end, it's one of my favourite scenes, probably the favourite scene for me. It's fucking amazing. Okay, well, we'll move away from the car- casting characters yeah. and on to the story. So, obviously, the start of the story is basically the aftermath of the Zod attack at the end of the last film. Uh, the middle is basically Batman basically trying to find a way to defeat Superman, and obviously, Superman did not, obviously, all these fucking ju- judge, jury, and, uh, and whatnot. Basically, during the Castellorian order for a while. And then yeah. the end is basically the, actually the Batman versus Superman fight, and then Trinity versus Doomsday. So. Obviously, how the story flows, it works fine. It works fine how it goes. Obviously, as you say, some of the Superman stuff is a bit meh. But there's no real story. It's acceptable. It has its moments and it has its... Yeah. Basically, has its ups and downs like any sort of movie tends to. The, th- the things that I would take out, but apart from that, the good stuff that they actually did, like, were really good. It's just the bad stuff. We're just like, uh, meh. Why? Yeah, I I do agree there massively. Mm. So uh, that was a quick sum up of the story. <laughs> uh, there's not there's not there's not too much to say because obviously a lot a lot of stuff we'll cover anyway from talking to like the a lot of the actual sequences because they sort of flow into the story. Anyway, yeah. So we'll just we'll just move on. Um, obviously cinematography. And again, similar to Man of Steel, Snyder has his vision of cinematography, and it it looks nice. It looks really good. The, the nightmare sequences look really cool. Um, the actual fight between Batman vs Superman looks really well, obviously in a cinematic term. Um, the opening looks really nice because obviously we get to see it from a different point of view. Um, as I said, the fucking the intro, the the murders, that's really nice to look at. I I I think it's really decent cinematography. It's really good again. Mm. I mean, especially like when, like during the fights and the scenes, because it's quite dark during the fight scenes, and like when they use kryptonite in it, like the green sort of like just, oh, like it probably like colours the screen and stuff. It's like fucking hell. It really, it did look really good, and it feels like you when you physically see like Superman getting weaker, and it's beautiful. The scene. And obviously the Wonder Woman intro when she comes into it, that's really well. Yeah. That looks really fucking good. Fucking yeah, yeah, like like the like heat like bouncing off the shield and stuff, it's like slowly fading away. And the music. We'll get to that in a minute. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. It's literally the next category to so hold those horses. Okay. Um But yeah, I, I, as as we stated last week with the Snyder's films, even when they're a bit down, the cinematography is always on par. Cinematography, I've always used it to overshadowing the rest of the movie. Sucker Punch, cinematography is great. 
movie. Not so great. Um, but you get you get my drift here. So Man of Steel had a great uh, cinematography, and he brings that again into this. He brings us this. Obviously, he makes it a bit more darker. The sort of it, it's a, obviously the first film and it's dark cinematography at times, but this it makes sense for the fact you know Batman's here. So it makes sense it being a bit more dark and grittier, and I feel yeah. like they captured the fact that you know Batman's here. It's dark and gritty. I'm Batman. So yeah, good cinematography. <laughs> Definitely, like even the Batcave. Yeah, like within there, it looked good. Like it was just dark, but there are some like light moments to it. Like, so he chef's kiss. I like a lot of the. I like the stuff. Some of the, even though the, this seems like when he's just in his house, when he's just waking up, and that they're quite. They look quite yeah. nicely well shot. Although I still think his house is basically the Avengers camp <laughs> compound <got> stolen. <laughs> Well, he's Batman. He probably did just uh, outbid Tony Stark for it. That's what I feel like. <laughs> but I mean, um, even that one, <laughs> obviously it's a mixture of CGI as well, but I mean, it still looks nice to look at in both points of views. Um, the When Flash appears, that's obviously uh, yeah. nicely shot. The blue light. Yeah. Like, obviously, that's out. obviously a mixture of cinematography and special effects, but it still looks nice to look at. And then, even the basic things uh, later on when you get to see all the other characters' appearance, because obviously... I didn't state obviously the characters and characters, but obviously we get to see Jason Momoa's Aquaman, uh, Ray Fisher's Cyborg, and obviously you get to see Ezra Miller's Flash as well through that obviously sequence when Wonder Woman's clicking on all the video footage. Obviously, all those are pretty much shown. Still, you can still see the computer screen, most of them pretty much, and it, it's a lot. Not it's a lot different than just obviously just zooming on the video and just having the video on screen. It's a lot yeah. nicer seeing it. She literally seeing it from her point of view of watching these on a computer screen. She can still see the outline on the screen. You can still see the outline on the screen. It looks nice. But it's the basic of things, but it still looks nice. <laughs> looks nice, yeah, does it? <laughs> okay. It's a good. It was a nice little detail. Yeah, nice detail. If they like, like kept that photo detail and other stuff. <laughs> Instead, they were under the capture the one woman looking at his computer screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we gave you. you? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, we'll move on then to score. And I've spent the last week obviously preparing for this uh, review by listening to the actual score over and over again. And it just gets better and better each time I listen to it. As I said, it captures that sort of angel and demon side of it, which I was pointed out is sort of like an overtone of this movie. And I just love each piece of music. Each has their perks. And I see Wonder Woman's, for example, great piece of music. Hans, yeah. Hans Zimmer and I think it's Junkie XL who also worked on it with him. They both knocked it at the park as usual. Yeah, uh, I mean, for me, it's more of like there's some that I like completely just forget while watching it. Whereas like her one, obviously, it stands out the most that it's sort of become iconic in a way. Like it's, when you hear it, like that's for the Wonder Woman film, or it's, that's Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? It's feels like her whereas some of the ones to like generic soundtrack music I wouldn't say generic generic like, the, like it... not all of them but there are some that I just, like goes over like oh it's gone like, that, that we like pay attention to, mm. to fair, fair enough yeah. well, obviously I'm, I'm more of a beautiful lies kind of guy the, the intro song is just beautiful. Yeah. It captures the sadness and sorrow within Batman, which is why I got pissed off when Wonder Woman 1984 stole that piece of music. Really? They used that music for Wonder Woman. Because the director was like, oh, it's, so, it's, such a, it's a basically a masterpiece of a song, and oh, I'm going to use it. And it basically, it, though it fits within the scene, it just feels a rip-off for the fact that it's Batman's music. And they're using it basically to sum up the bad guy character and Wonder Woman's loss. So uh, again, it sort of fits within the fact. Obviously, it showcases loss, but they stole that music from Batman. It's Batman's song of loss. <laughs> uh, fuck you, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. You're a massive letdown, and I can't wait to slam the shit out of you at times when we did that one. <laughs> oh, I would just drop something on my foot. I don't know what it was, but it hurt. Um, yeah, bat rank. no, my back rank's behind me. I think it was a Blu-ray. I'm I'm reaching under my foot. Yep, it's definitely in Blu-ray. Don't know what one. Can't be asked to look. Um, but yeah, I I I really enjoyed the 
score is. I feel like just like Man of Steel, it's a solid score. Which is the way the one of the things that ha- the DC extended universe, what it was called back then, but now it's DC Worlds because I keep changing the fucking name in five seconds. Um, it's one thing it always had. It always had a great soundtrack to each movie because they always picked the right composers, like Hans Zimmer. Great. Words. Okay. Forgetting. <laughs> Good score. Move on. <laughs> yeah, because by the time it fucking finishes, it'll be longer than the fucking film. <laughs> um, special effects. I think they're decent again. Just like Man of Steel, I think yeah. there's some good special, special effects. Though obviously a lot of people hate the design of Doomsday. I didn't mind it. I feel like it It obviously starts off as this sort of troll, but it, it earns the spikes and that. So for the context of the story, it makes sense, his design choice. And I feel like when he does have the spikes, he looks really good. He's like, he's like a Pokemon. He's still evolving. Right yeah, basically. Time. And obviously there's a lot of other sort of sequences that use special effects. And I, again, a lot of things with the, especially the first two movies, they had good special effects. We won't talk about the last two, the next two, just yet. Um, or three, technically. Um... But I mean, again, I feel like they did a good job of making this movie look legit. <laughs> that, that's the word I'm after here. Yeah. Totally. I can't really think of anything that looked dicey off the top of my noggin. <laughs> no, can't think I mean, of anything. <laughs> not really, no. I mean, there was one moment of, like, of Doomsday where he turned and the CGI looked a little bit rough. Like, it wasn't as polished as the other scenes were. But it was like, it goes by so fast, you, you barely notice it. So I didn't notice it. Bad, bad. <laughs> Is that the I, mean, I was part of it, right? <laughs> but, Well, I, to be fair, yeah. for that sequence, I was watching you fall asleep. <laughs> so, like, I think I'm more... Not like, perv. Uh, my attention picked up more when Wonder Woman came up. Like, when it was building up to that scene, I woke up a bit more. I know, but like, so. I was more awake, like, after that. Because uh, it, it, it was after Wonder Woman appeared. But, yeah, like, most of, of, like, what we saw was good CGI. Just there was some elements, like, barely noticeable, but yeah. were there still. Okay. Okay then. Uh, action sequences. There's a few here. Uh, so obviously, the movie kicks off after the obviously intro of the deaths. We get to see the Zod and Superman fight, but from the ground perspective. Similar to obviously when we saw the obviously from Perry's perspective in the last one. It, obviously this time it's from Bruce Wayne's perspective as he's trying to make his way all the way to yeah. Wayne uh, Tower. Obviously driving through, watching all the destruction crash around him. So there's not really much fighting going on in it. It's literally just meant to be, obviously, it's just like a really like, fast-paced Bruce Wayne like driving disaster. as quick as he can. Yeah, like a disaster. That's exactly. It's literally like yeah. a disaster film rather than, obviously, a superhero film for the fact that it's, obviously, it's just him driving as quick as he can. But It was less Batman, more 2012. Yeah, basically. Obviously, it made con- sense for the context of the movie for the fact that this is what set him off. He's already tipped anyway because of everything else that's happened in his life, but this moment, watching that entire building of people just get va- vaporised and crumble to pieces and whatnot, that's yeah. what fully set him off. Especially, obviously, well, with that he's... little girl, when he's like, yeah. oh, where's your parents? She's just like, up there. He's like, I'm going to kill you, Superman. Dun, dun! Right after I start training, this girl's been back girl. <laughs> it's not bad oh. girl! <laughs> oh, sorry, Robin. It's not Robin! <laughs> It's nothing. She's just a character that's in the movie that's only in one scene. It's just because, like, the whole point of Batman is if I find a kid, like a kid that's lost the parents, uh, you got your parents? Me too, kid. You come with me. <laughs> I'm going uh, you, to you, you're basically I'm making going Batman to... sound like a paedophile. <laughs> Batman's a child catcher. <laughs> no, he just gets kids and trains them to punch clowns. They, he, still but he, like, he, still ch- he still sounds like a child catcher. <laughs> Well, it is Batman. Is he going to start ch- singing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang as he's driving away? He <laughs> 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 and start singing uh, his face. 
pedophile character. Oh, for fuck's sake. The pink Eric character. Moving on. Um, but obviously, from an action point of view, it's not... Obviously, it's sort of big action moment. As I say, it's more disaster movie. And I, f- I, I think it's... I still enjoyed it. I still thought it was a decent sort of way to kick off this movie and give Batman his motivation to go, I'm going to fight Superman. I'm going to fight him. I'm not going to sit back anymore. Even though... Because obviously... It... Though he's obviously been fighting crime for the past how long, he's sort of had... He wasn't as like sort of a major sort of uh, all out as he was until that happened. Obviously, from that point, then he was like, okay, 100% of the time now, I'm Batman pretty much. Because he was sort of like in a 50-50 state, I think, from it. He was more of a businessman more than anything by this point. Yeah. He wasn't like fully like, retired, but he was like half in, half out. And when this happened, he was like, okay, I'm, all, I'm back in there. That's it. I'm I'm busting up Superman. Unless he says my mom's name, and then I'm stopping. <laughs> Let's be honest, Batman and Superman are both tipping over the bomb. Yeah. Just saying. But yeah, good scene. And from, nice from uh, someone else's perspective for that fight. Definitely, yeah. Uh, next, again, it's not a, a major action sequence, it's just that desert uh, attack scene. Obviously, that just plays into the later on story where obviously we learn that Luthor's the one behind all this. And it's literally, this is literally just there, just so the world can. Quote unquote, see Superman as a bad guy, even though he technically vaporized all these villains. It, uh, well, he didn't even vaporize them, he just did, did one in. He only did one. The rest, uh, well, the rest were the bad guys. So, uh, obviously, for the context of the movie, it was fine. It's obviously just not this big, spectacular action sequence, and, you know, it's just there. So you can say, really. Yeah. Or you can pretty much say, just. That is all you can really say. Please. Exactly. It's just there. Bad guys kill bad guys. Add. Yeah. Simple as. It's more of a plot point, maybe. Really. Yeah, that's all it really is. But one p- reason to get Superman arrested. Well, yeah. Caught him. Yeah, basically. Whatever you call it. Yeah. Sued. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, but the next sequence, I will say, is a great sequence, and that is the nightmare sequence. That entire shot when I went when I first saw it in cinema, I was like, "Wait, what the hell's going on here?" And then Batman just starts essentially shooting people. I'm like, "Am I watching Batman murder people?" A whole sequence yeah. is just really well shot and looked really nice. I like the look of it that went forward with Batman with that sort of a uh, trench coat and the goggles and whatnot. It looked really yeah. like, cool. I mean, how how I would say this is. It was shot amazing. It looked amazing. It was done beautifully. However, what was the fucking point of it? To tell, show you that there's a nightmare timeline. The fact that what happened when Doomsday comes, which is obviously what the whole thing is with the next Justice League, because this it, felt it, 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 it carries on. It, well, that, that's the whole that, literally the whole point of it, it's just a nightmare at the time. It's just him literally just falling asleep yeah. and the it, nightmare happening. And obviously, then we get the flash moment where he's like, "I, oh, Lois is the key. You need to follow yeah. Lois. Basically, this is literally the sequence is here just to say, make the Justice League go on, find us all. Yeah. I know, but like, it's also a little bit, conf- it's a bit confusing. It felt like it was added afterwards in a way. I don't know. This, this has always been how Snyder was sort of going with it. So, I mean, I mean it's, he probably. We already planned to have that in anyways but i mean like the way like it, can't, it felt like okay out of nowhere out of the blue yeah i feel like he's just trying to find any point that bruce falls asleep <laughs> basically yeah it, it just it was very confusing at the first i thought i like switched the remote and went to a different film or something because it'd be like you're sitting there you're watching the first iron man he falls asleep and he dreams of thanos like stabbing him with a knife or anything snapping, you're like what? I, I it cuts get, back I, to I, 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 get, Iron I, get, Man. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I do get what you're saying. It comes out of nowhere, but from a personal point of view, I really enjoyed it. I liked seeing the parademons for the first time. I like the fact we got to see Bad Guy Superman because I very much enjoyed Bad Guy Superman from the fact that I enjoyed okay. the Injustice games where you yeah. literally see Bad Guy Superman. So I would enjoy them going that path at some point maybe showing this evil version like as a proper like full film where they're battling him so it was nice to see that 
and obviously as i say we've got this cool version of batman to see and also we've got the the future flash we literally got to see the the first sort of vision of this movie star flash yeah obviously it's a lot different in the actual movies later on but the future version looks quite cool i like the helmet i mean the flash fit i'd keep in it was just the nightmare scene like it would have been more like fitting if they used that like more like if they showed him falling asleep, maybe it would be more like less out of the blue. Maybe. Mm, divided opinion then. Let's just put it at that and move on. Uh obviously the next sort of action sequence is the Batman Bill Chase. Uh, I I think it was really cool. Obviously it starts with him with the sniper rifle and he's putting the the dart to the back of the fucking truck and then he just comes out no his Batman Bill starts playing for everyone. And I like this for <coughs> the fact that we get to see this side of Batman. He's like, I don't give a shit. But the fact that he just slams every vehicle and blows everything up, he drives straight for a building. Don't give a shit. Straight for the building. Ramp up. I'm gonna destroy everything as much as I can. Batman doesn't kill. He just breaks all your legs and arms. Makes you that like. That is literally the plot. Like one of the purposes of the Dark Knight Returns animated film. He literally just like, puts those people in hospital. He literally breaks this guy's like legs and everything. The cops like. Oh, he's gonna kill him. He's like, he's not gonna die. He's, he's, he'll walk fine soon. He's just, he's young. He'll be fine. And he literally, he knows where to, like, where to do the damage. But technically speaking, this version of Batman, he kind of does kill people. He does. I'll point out the bit where I'm about in a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. There's loads of times when he yeah. obviously if I can kill somebody. Like, every mean, single Batman film, there's a, a scene like that. Yeah, I feel like it's probably one of my. Actually, I'll probably say it's my favorite Batman build chase sequence. So we had a few, obviously, in the Dark Knight movies, but they were just basically him as chasing after people, and it, it it wasn't obviously as action sort of focused, though. Obviously, because obviously he had all the he didn't. Mm, how do I put this? He just used the tank just to play into people. Whereas this version, at times, he was using like fucking like in a sense, fucking um like tow hooks and whatnot just to fucking hook people up and just send them crashing. Basically, he was using them as weapons essentially. And even obviously with the fucking rocket launch, he was just dodging out the way. Basically, anything they threw at him, he was just using it as ways just to, for them to just kill themselves, essentially. Like a tanker, when they drive out in front of it, aiming to block him, and he just fucking just drives us to the side, and they just crash into it and blow up. Like that, essentially. I just think it's a really cool scene. I think she's died. And there she is. She's there. Life. <laughs> I was remembering that Martha scene. It, it's killing me. Martha. We're not on Martha, we're on the Batman chase. What's your thoughts? I, I don't know, but your thought, that's, that's the problem. I'm trying to keep fingers stuff, but I just keep going to the Martha. Well, we're going to be on that bit in a minute, so, you know. I don't want to be. Just to say you liked or hated the Batman Bill Chase, we move on. I liked or hated the Batman film, move on. Different words to what I said, but okay. Um, <laughs> if we we'll move on to the actual fight then, Batman vs Superman. And though obviously the ending is very controversial, as you point, have said many times already, the one word. I feel like the actual fight itself was really cool. I feel like obviously, as you say, Superman stupidly punched him instantly which set off the whole fight after Batman tried to attack him but I mean when they're actually going like toe to toe I feel like it's really a really really cool fight like they're just battering the crap out of each other literally I like the bit when Batman like puts the zip line around his fucking leg and just like, spins him around the fucking room smashing through every fucking pillar there is that was cool the bathroom fight when he's just using the fucking uh, different parts of the bathroom to smash each other in that was cool I think in general the fucking whole fight obviously was shot cool had a decent sort of score of the background the lighting was really like, adding to it. Mm, I agree. But, but we have the infamous still, part. Yeah. When Batman has no. the upper advantage and Superman no. has to save Martha. No. And he's like gets really confused like wait what? I'm, I'm sorry. And he has the flashbacks to the start of the movie making the start actually seem more useful into the purpose of the movie. And then Obviously, Lois comes in, stops him. He's like, oh, it's his mum's name. He's like, what? Oh, shit, we've got the same name, mom. Oh, I can't kill you now. You can't best friends. <laughs> <laughs> and though it's controversial, at times I like controversy. 
And over time, it just hasn't bothered me as much as it bothers you. Is this why you say you support Hitler? You shouldn't say this stuff, Tom. That's you, you not me. You, you are a disgusting person, Tom. You that's, should, should get help. That's you, not me. Yeah, yeah as I said, you, that's you. God, he doesn't listen, does he? Jesus. <sighs> God. Yeah, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me as much anymore. Did I, well, again, I in, I for fuck's sake. <laughs> I meant Martha. I don't think Mar- it. Re- I don't think it, re- it really bothered me at any point. I've never been fussed with the fact that he says Martha is the way to stop the fight. It's not been anything that's pissed me off, as it just pisses you off. And um, yeah. We'll move on because I know you, you don't like it. But it pisses you off. Um, we'll actually move on to a post scene to that, which is the Whereas fight with Batman. Which is actually really good. Yes, it's obviously, better than it, more. It, it kicks off with obviously the Batwing or whatever he's calls it in this universe. I'm assuming he's still calls it the Batwing. Uh, blowing up the sh- shit out of fucking cars and whatnot. But then when he actually goes into the building and starts beating the heavy living crap out of everyone. And the one thing I was saying when he pretty much... He's definitely killed this guy. The one when he's punching that guy on the floor over and over again. He's clearly fucking killed that guy. He's mushing his brains into the ground. You just don't see it. And you oh, fucking, that. that one guy gets stabbed. Because of Batman. I, I, I feel like he's definitely killed some people in here. But I mean, the whole, whole overall context of seeing this sequence is really cool. And it's pure Batman delight. I mean, yeah, that's honest. It, it, that's a good example of saying the Batman scenes are better than the Superman ones. Because all the Batman fight scenes are just fucking amazing. Exactly. But even like when he's sitting there relaxing, talking to Scar, fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, in the context, of the, obviously, the movie, then obviously he, that guy blows up because he tries to vaporize Batman with the fucking the fire. But it's an example of Batman killing someone for the fact that he's broken this fucking gas tank. So as soon as the fire hits it, boom, boom, goes dynamite. Example of Batman killing someone because he he's not took... dead. He's just so burnt he can't breathe. Okay, pretty soon he's dead. Um, but. Obviously, you got like, that one moment where he's like, oh, my friend of your son's. You know, I've only just met your son, but I'm your best. I'm his best friend right now because he's got the same mom's name. And he's obviously, uh, fucking Martha's like, oh, yeah, I, I clearly guessed. It's, you know, the cape that gives it away. Because, you know, people with capes hang out all the time together. It's how it works. <laughs> Maybe <Okay>. logic. <laughs> but, I yeah. mean, yeah, I've seen all the, uh, like, DC animated cartoons. All the cape ones hang out to it, the ones that don't. They all swear at each other, like, I'm not going to hang out with you. I mean, that's the reason why Superboy doesn't wear a cape. He doesn't want to hang around with all the caped ones. It's weird. You seen Robin? <laughs> yes. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, good good fight, Batman. Good fight. A nice little end solo fight for you. To show yeah. off your new skills. Or old skills, technically. Uh, yeah. So obviously, the, the next fight moving on is the start of the Doomsday fight with Superman. Where obviously it's just basically them just do battering the shit out of each other for a, a short while before obviously getting sent into space and getting nuked. But yeah, Sid makes the worst off it because he's just like a zombie. While Doomsday is like, oh yeah, I'm becoming more Doomsday now. But I mean, the context of the fight obviously just show it's showcasing obviously these two's their like power levels, the fact that they're quite even at times. Mm. And obviously, it also shows that Doomsday's got this other ability where he takes enough damage, he he's essentially evolves. He basically gets to like level twenty, and he's finally evolving. And then he's got you know go get to level uh, thirty or forty, depending on what species, and uh, he's evolving again. Yeah. But you know, it's a decent little fight to kick off this, you know, essentially trio of doomsday fights. It shows his skills in the fight. That's all that matters here. Obviously, like, it's a bit like um, like Thor and Hulk fighting, like visually. This big hulking, massive guy with spikes and stuff hitting a guy with tights, a cape. Essentially, yeah. Yeah. It's basically like that. It's still good. Yeah. And obviously that sort of flows into the next sort of arc of the fight, which is obviously Batman getting involved. And obviously he does it. He doesn't obviously physically fight him with his fist, but he uses his weapons on his vehicles to shoot, showing that 
obviously he clearly can't go toe to toe like Superman can. It shows oh, yeah. this though Batman's core, cool, he's a lot weaker and he, he has to use his tech to fight, which is a nice little like showing because obviously we've just seen Batman take the shit, kick the shit out of all these bad guys, but now we're seeing the fact that yeah, he's not actually that strong, so he's got to actually stay in his vehicle for this fight. And even like when he actually gets to the fight later on, yeah. you don't see him. He obviously never goes toe to toe. He always does distance fighting. So it shows that yeah. other side to Batman, essentially. It'd be like Kai and Black Widow go up against Thanos. Like, uh, yeah, uh, what can we fucking do against this guy? <laughs> yeah. Shoot with guns. No. Basically, it's like that. But I still think it's a nice little scene of obviously just showing Batman flying around and shooting. Yeah. And it, uh, Ben Affleck in the cockpit going, <laughs> he's trying to like not crash. It's basically, that is the whole reason for why there is like always uh, like some killable people. There's like random like minions for the bad guy. It's so all the human characters have something to do. Yeah, basically. Pretty much. Or else they're like this, they're just here going, what the fuck do we do? Yeah. And Should we just like, <laughs> Play tic tac toe or something. <laughs> I've, got, I've got cards. I'll do that. <laughs> and obviously, the the third half of this fight is obviously Trinity versus Doomsday. So Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah. So obviously, Wonder Woman comes in, badass as always. And then Batman gets yeah. out his cockpit. Superman arrives, bashes fucking Doomsday. They all look at each other. They're like, "Oh, is she with you?" And he's like, "Oh, I thought she was with you." Because fucking Batman's a racist. This is the first time that like Wonder Woman has been like in between Superman and Batman. Mm, freeway. Um but yeah, obviously when they get obviously they're like, Oh yeah, we need the Kryptonite spear. Lois is already getting there, she's draining and whatnot. Um and it, and obviously this, this bit of fight now obviously we see one of them using a, a sword skills, using her punching skills and what and yeah. a shield to obviously help fight Doomsday. Superman's obviously using his uh heat uh laser beams, heat rays, whatever fucking you know what I mean. Uh, is, that, is that a really cool scene when he sort of flies and the sort, sort of blasts, doesn't he? And then Doomsday just does the exact same back. And then sort of, yeah. obviously, Doomsday just overpowers him instantly. Obviously, Wonder Woman. Actually, I think that's a bit when uh, he goes to attack again, but then he hears Lois and has to go save her. So, obviously, we see a bit more Batman just getting there after flight a zip line around because he's getting attacked by Doomsday. He's like, yep, 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 I'm out of here. Bye, 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 bye. Basically, he's like, he's like that kid that uh, wants to fight, but he doesn't want to fight. He's like, yep, bye, bye. Uh, Stay as far away as I can. I'm over here. Come and get me. Okay, I'm over here now. Like that sort of thing. And obviously, then they bring the, the spear yeah. into it. All you can fucking do is that. Yeah. And obviously, he brings the spear into it, and Superman has to start. Uh, he obviously tries to fly it. Uh, Doomsday's doing it really bad, like scripts and lights. What the heck? Uh, one of them is uh, lasso a truth of fucking Doomsday, and Batman's shooting the last kryptonite fucking gas canister from a distance. And eventually, obviously, Superman stabs him. And you have to think about this this way. If it wasn't for Wonder Woman lobbing uh, Doomsday's arm off, he wouldn't have had a weapon to kill Superman. <laughs> so Wonder Woman oh. killed Superman. <laughs> True. She, she lobbed his arm off. He grew the spike and he stabbed him. So Wonder Woman killed Superman, not Doomsday. But, but, but there wouldn't be a Doomsday if it wasn't for Mark Zuckerberg. Just think of that. Damn you, that Zuckerberg! Uh, Looking at that. Looking, looking at my uh, advertisement stuff again. How did you know I wanted that from Wish? <laughs> no, yeah. so, how, how do you know I watched watch One Direction? I don't want to buy Harry Styles from Wish for twenty dollars. Yeah, as a overall free arc to this little fight here, I think it was a really decent fight showing yeah. off all their skills. Obviously, we only get a brief one of one, but again, it's enough to show her skills for the obviously her film coming up. But I feel like we've got enough of each of them showing off what they can do against this sort of thing. And obviously we got the ending of Superman dying, which obviously no one would have probably expected heading into it. Like, oh, shit, I just killed Superman off. Wow. So I'll give him credit there. It was a good fight. (laughs) He's very surprising, though, his death. Like, when you watch these, like, films, I think because people got so used to, like, Marvel, all the main characters didn't really, like, start dying until Infinity War, really. So it's like, no one's really, like, ever, I haven't seen it before. It's very new. Yeah, especially being, like, a major, major yeah. sort of character. Like, two movies in. Fuck, they just killed yeah. Superman? It would literally just be like, if, in, like, the first ever Avengers film, you see, like, 
cap, just get, get decapitated. Yeah. Basically like that. It'd be a big fucking give, give, them, give them credit for fucking going for it. Obviously, it's playing off for the fact in just like the resurrection parts coming out. But for when this came out, I give them credit for doing what they did. So yeah, uh, I feel like they got some good action sequences in this film. I feel like there's a bit more in this than there was in um, Man of Steel because obviously they got the Batman side to it. Yeah. So good fights, good fights. Uh, Hayden, you know what time it is, don't you? Uh, Hayden's editing hour or you know, five minutes running over. I thought it was um, six. Eight. No. We've got time on. No, it's editing. <laughs> Do you editing? Okay. Um, editing was absolutely piss poor. Like every now and then, near like the like last half of the film, it just kept going black, and then like it will come back again, like with no explanation. It kept going black again. And then, oh, uh, I've got falling asleep. <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't remember that. <laughs> I think your eyes have fallen asleep. <laughs> Stop sleeping on the job. <laughs> All right. There weren't any stand at the moment. The only thing I can think of is just... Wonder Woman. There was something like... Bad ways, but some scenes that didn't seem like they fit. But there were some good moments, like we mentioned, with the woman that was fucking good. the way like it, the like like as he's getting she, like I can't remember, was it Batman getting blasted? Yeah, he was in the Batmobile. Uh, the yeah. Batwing, he couldn't get out. He's like, he oh shit, trapped, trapped like oh no, seatbelts. <laughs> and then she comes down like Batman's like, kryptonite yeah. seatbelts. <laughs> it's very good. So, yeah. basically, the film has its moments and has its uh, basically yeah. ups and downs, like the film in general, basically. Yeah, but like the physical editing, though, there's no like actual proper standouts, but like the effect wise and the way it was like shot was done good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, obviously, next up is the pacing of the movie, and it obviously flows as non movies should, really. It doesn't. It doesn't. It obviously, it doesn't really like jump timeline wise. Apart from obviously the start of it when it's jumping from the uh, the. It, I, I'd say the the nightmares and the dream. Obviously, that, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, other than that, I mean, apart from the time jump at the start to the modern time, a lot of it just flows normal time. Like it just goes from uh, them find their fucking uh, kryptonite in the floor to. Obviously, Superman's death, it just flows like so, sort of normal time. Obviously, they've got that cut out in the middle where, obviously, they said nightmare sequence happens. But if you cut that out, a lot of the rest of it, it's just, it just flows normally. It doesn't really rush at Literally. times. Because it doesn't really have to rush for the fact that it's three hours long. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like you said, it's very linear, but like those moments, I think, mess with the pace. Really. That's probably the reason why I don't like them, is because, like, not only like, they come out of nowhere, but they do mess up the pace. So, you know. Okay, uh, okay, moving on. Um, production design, and obviously we both stayed at the back, uh, back cave, looks amazing. Uh, they, yeah. they definitely stole the, uh, Bruce Wayne definitely outbidded Iron Man for the uh, Avengers compound, it still looks cool. Um, it, desert scenes look really cool. Obviously, there's probably a mixture there with practical and digital there. Um, trying to figure some of us. Basically, I, I think, as usual with these films, the production design is usually, oh, pardon me, um, usually good. I don't really, there's not really any sort of bad production design, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, the props are pretty good, the setting good, and outfit. Outfits are very good, especially with Batman's yeah, uh, Batman's armor. Ones. Love his armor. Armor and like his normal suits. Things well, it's really good. They don't fit. They don't feel like impractical on the other I mean, Like it doesn't feel like he caught him with his fucking head. Yeah. But like, it seems like a normal, realistic Batman. Well done. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, script. 
Uh, this feels like a normal script to me, to be fair. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the, dialogue, the dialogue's just a normal amount of dialogue. It felt like the script was like really good, but some of the fan ones, they flew out and no one could find them, so they had to add them. <laughs> Yeah, as you already said, he's the, the dicey part of the movie. Is the Superman half? Yeah. Basically. I mean, the, the normal sort of dialogue. It, it, it's it's your average amount of dialogue. It's, there's nothing really too bad about it. There's nothing really great about it. That that sums it up for me. I think a lot of like um, Scar seems pretty good. Yeah. Dialogue. Jamie Irons is good. That's why. I'll be su- I would be surprised to find out that he had them himself. Them himself. <laughs> really. Friends come with faster again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, ending time. Uh, so obviously the ending is basically Batman wanting to bring the metahumans together. It's obviously to do with the war that's incoming thanks to what Luther said about the fact that God's dead so the bell's been rung and whatnot. And obviously Superman's not fully dead with that little tease the ground hovering up. And obviously, this is all just because of the fucking the nightmare timeline. Batman's like, yeah, I need a team right now. I watched uh, two Avengers movies before this, and we definitely need a team. Uh, yeah, so let's get a team. <laughs> obviously, I got... should have like set all these characters first before getting a team. No, we're getting the team now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. It's fine. For the context of maybe the actual Justice League movie that's coming out, maybe it's going to even be. It works, but obviously from the one we got, it just obviously it's very rushed for the fact it's only like four, five movies in. But obviously it wouldn't be it'd be very stupid of us not to mention the fact that we get to see Steppenwolf in the extended version. We get to see a little tease of him and the fact that that's literally what he meant by the war is coming. Cause Steppenwolf literally is bringing the war along with Apocalypse to Earth, which then would lead to Nightmare Timeline if they don't stop it. So that was cool. But, you know, it's it's a decent ending. I won't say it's dreadful. It's decent. I don't know how you could really end it other than mourning the fact that Superman's dead. It makes, uh, it, it makes maybe, sense. Maybe show um, Martin Zuckerberg getting shot in the head. Well, he got sh- He had his head shaved, so it's, uh, you know, he's lost his beautiful locks. So it's fine. It's fine. It's not like he's going to get out of prison or anything. Oh, wait. Damn you, Facebook! Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's, you know, you average sort of ending to a movie. I don't know hey, how I'd like it to have ended, to be fair. I haven't really thought of that. It was like, okay, three hours are up. I'm off for a piss. I mean, that, that is most people's favourite part of the film. <laughs> when you get the, to pee. The credits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank fuck, that's gone. That's good. Come on, okay. we're we'll never coming here again. Fucking waste of money. <laughs> okay, then, uh, well, we away from the ending now, because, you know. Me, mediocre. Um, so one new segment I've added is favorite moment of the movie. So mine is the Wayne murder opening. Just I think it's very artsy fart. So it's really nice to look at and beautiful liar on top of it. Magnificent, magnificent. I mean, my favorite part was when um, Fred Xavier popped up. That's not Xavier. It was amazing. It was Lex Luthor. <laughs> it's Facebook again. It's got you again. <laughs> They're just going to offer you the, the X Men complete box set for a reduced price of 20 quid. I have got that advert. Thank you. <laughs> I'll <do> that. <laughs> oh, but obviously, Pat Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman's Woman. arrival. Yeah. yeah. It's, very, it's a very good moment. There's a few, there is a few good moments that. But I, I agree, this, that's like a really standout moment. It was very tough for me because there's a few moments I do like, but that song at the start just gets me every time. So we'll move on to the pinnacle moment of the movie, the rating. And I enjoy controversy at times. So I'm going to get some controversial stuff. I don't even do it singing about it. <laughs> so I'm going to give Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition specifically not the base edition that'd be like a mm, seven and a half, maybe 8 a push but I do like some of the extra half hour stuff that fill plot holes which I just can't remember off the top of my head because it's been a while since I watched the first version because you know I watched the first version then we got the 3 hour version uh, so I'm going to give Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition a 
Controversial, 9 out of 10. <laughs> You you are perfect rating this higher than you let it do. <laughs> yes, I am. It's time to meme me up. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> My rating is going to be a seven. It's the worst of moments that make it a good film. The others that make it average. So seven is how it goes. That's Highest, I'll give it. Fair enough. Uh, I was expecting you to go lower, actually, but fair enough. Um, Both points go to Wonder Woman and Jamie Iron, just saying so you know. Fair enough. Uh, so that gives Batman vs Superman Ultimate Edition a test cave overall rating of eight out of ten. Uh, so we'll quickly move on. <laughs> we'll quickly move to uh, over to the chat cave MVP award, and we both straight up agreed it's got to be Batman. Ben Affleck's yeah, Batman, he's got to be. He's like one of the, he's the best part of this movie, apart from when Wonder Woman does come in. Oh, it's Batman. I've got, I've, got, I've got a guy written down, Jesse Eyes. No, it's... He's written oh, it down wrong really again. Said, I've always said off the award. God damn it. Ben Affleck's great. We'll move on, because we've already spoke so much about how much we fucking love how he's a performance of Batman. Because we're running so far over time, we're going to be as equal to the Dora podcast in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Which to be fair is fine for the fact that that was actually the falling for the move, but this isn't going to be. But uh, okay, so the runner up for the Jack Cave MVP award is we both easily agree on this as well Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. She does great when she comes into it, overshadows them, everyone. But for the fact that we've got Batman for the like a good two hours or so, it, it, it just about tips it over. So, yeah. Uh, we'll move on then to uh, the question of the day, and you know. I thought to myself, what could I write here? So, you know, I just thought the obvious thing, and that is, what other franchise would you like to see collide in a versus movie? Oh, this is a tough one, really. Dora vs. Uh, Diego. <laughs> my joke, that, that would be my joke version, <laughs> but you know my real version would be to have some kind of, like, like Marvel and Ben 10 connection. That, you know that would be it. Come on, it's me. It is you, yes. Yeah, I, I'd love it. Be good. I feel like just for the fact that they're obviously in the sort of they've got the same director, I feel like just League versus fucking Watchmen would be very interesting. So obviously it's two different kinds. Obviously, yeah, it's, it'd be pretty much like Doctor. It'd be basically Manhattan versus fucking Superman. It'd be a uh, fucking Night Owl versus Batman. Uh, Silver Spectre, I think her name is like, Silk Spectre or whatever her fucking name is. Her versus Wonder Woman, I mean. Uh. And then Raw Shark just taking out everyone else by going, Hey, look at my mask. What do you see? <laughs> yeah. And then Batman's like, Wait, you look like my dad. Because the one guy's the same as that movie. <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> are, are you my dad? <laughs> okay, guys, I'm changing team. I'm a watchman now. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I can imagine that. They're basically the same characters. Yeah. What I could do, though. He's right out to Man- uh, Manhattan, like uh, Civil War did with Hulk and Thor. Oh, good point. Yeah, that would also... Because obviously then the big guns are gone, aren't they? Right, yeah, right. Maybe even what? take Wonder Woman out for the these fact that she's these overpowered these as well. True. Basically, that maybe have like, the sort of the ones that basically use weapons or basically use fighting skills more than, like, superpowers. Instead, so, Basically, take out the, the Flash. Oh, good point. So, you take out the Flash because he's super speed. So you're just going to be Batman versus... No, you'd bring, you'd bring in like some other characters, obviously. Because there is obviously like, still like yeah, Green Arrow and stuff like that. Obviously, you'd build it up to work right, so you bring introduce these characters into this universe so it makes sense for the fight. Yeah. You get my drift. I, I think there's, there's loads of other fucking... Batman, Green Arrow, Robin and Batgirl versus the entirety of the Watchmen while Aquaman sitting in the background <laughs> to a fish. They're like, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, 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 I punch him in the face. It's great. But yeah, I, I feel like there's many other franchises that could do brawl, like brawl out. There's, there's a there's a lot that'd be interesting. But you know, I just randomly say Watchmen for the fact I looked right and I saw the Watchmen Blu-ray. Simple as. <laughs> Time to just fucking and Hatton yeah. Superman in the background doing uh, rock paper scissors because they can't actually fight that kill the entire world. Yes. Like like that's a okay, comedy. Rock paper scissors. <laughs> Okay, let's, let's end it then because we've gone way too over time. Um, so that's it for this very uh, long chat of Maybe some might call it an 
extended cut because <laughs> it, it, it did an extended version um so join us uh next week as we discuss suicide squad extended cut you know the one with like an extra 10 minutes oh uh, and, you know we've got, we've got james here hopefully so that's a nice Good little uh special guest there to kick us off uh so and um until then uh i've been your host ranking thomas Hughes. <laughs> and it's been Chatter Cave Podcast. Oh my man! Really hurt the throat. <coughs> I know that feeling. Life is pain. Dead parents. Oh, Martha! Man.